Today, we're comparing the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus to the iPhone 15 Pro. Both of these phones retail for $999. They're both flagship devices. And I feel like if you're looking at one, you owe yourself to look at the other two because they're both great in their own regards. Now, in terms of overall year over year changes, both of them are very iterative. Like that's just the way the smartphone industry is now. We're at the point where changes year over year are tiny and small. But if I had to choose which one got the most, I'd give it to the S24 Plus because compared to last year's, S23 Plus, they increased the size of the phone. They gave it a bigger display at 6.7 inches while reducing the bezels. Yes, the phone is a tiny bit bigger, but not by much. The other change was the edges of the device. Like on the previous version, they were rounded off, they're polished. I do find that this one was easier to hold at the expense of being a tiny bit more slippery. Whereas this one is more squared off, it's not as comfortable, but it's still a very comfortable phone because the back of the phone edges are rounded. The other little thing I noticed was that the camera bumps on the back of the S24 Plus don't protrude as much compared to the previous version, but it's very, very minor. Either way, the changes are not that drastic. Now compared to the iPhone 15 Pro, it really comes down to would you rather have a bigger display? Would you rather use a bigger phone with one hand? These are the type of questions you have to ask yourself. I personally love the size of the iPhone 15 Pro. I personally love the size of the Galaxy S24. They just feel good for a day-to-day -day device, but it really comes down to how you feel. Now the weird thing is, even though technically, the S24 Plus is a little bit heavier. And I mean a little bit, like eight grams heavier. It feels lighter than the iPhone 15 Pro. And I think that's because the 15 Pro is so dense, you know, in a smaller compact form factor that it just feels a little bit heavier in the hand. Whereas this larger device has more room to spread that weight around. And again, this is like a mental thing that's happening. It's not actually the difference. Like this is a heavier, phone. Besides that, the button placement is different on both devices. On the iPhone, the power button is on the right hand side where you get both the volume rocker and power button on the right of the S24 Plus. As for the other side, there's no buttons whatsoever on the S24 Plus. It's completely clean. Whereas on the iPhone, you get your volume rocker and your action button. Now this action button, I wish was on every single phone, every phone. It's so handy to be able to bind whatever you want to it. Regardless of what you can come up with, you can probably bind it to that button. Now, personally, I've been using the flashlight. I use it every single night when I go to bed. I'm usually the last one and my kids like to keep their doors open. I don't want to turn on a hallway light. So I use the flashlight so I don't trip on a cat. In terms of material finishes, the S24 Plus does not have that titanium coating the S24 Ultra has, but the iPhone 15 Pro does. And look, it's just a more durable material. Like you're less likely to break your phone if it drops. It's just a better material to use on a device. Is it gonna make that much of a difference if you use a case? Absolutely not. But if you do rock your phone naked, you might have a better chance with the iPhone 15 Pro. Now both phones obviously have dual speakers as a 2024 flagship should. I will say that they are tuned a bit differently. The Galaxy phone tends to emphasize the high end with removing some of that bass. The iPhone 15 Pro, on the other hand, doesn't have as crispy highs, but a more balanced sound spectrum. But the S24 Plus does get a little bit louder. The displays on both of these devices are absolutely gorgeous. They both have LTPO panels, meaning they can ramp up and down anywhere from one hertz all the way up to 120 hertz, and they feel very smooth and fluid to use. The big difference comes down to the peak brightness. The iPhone tops out at 2000 nits, whereas the Galaxy S24 Plus tops out at 2600 nits. Now, what does this mean on a daily use? Not much. Like the only time you're really gonna notice the peak brightness of 2600 or 2000 is if you're watching certain HDR content. That's the only time it will ramp up and not the entire screen ramps up to that magical number. It's only a tiny little portion on the screen where the brightness is occurring. That's the only difference. But everyday use, the standard peak, the standard brightness rather, is pretty much identical. Now I do wanna talk about one thing on the S24 Plus. There's a lot of stupid complaints going around saying that the screen looks dull. 
because the screen mode calibration is not working right now. You can't change it out of the Vivid Profile to make it more saturated or make the Vivid Profile in general more saturated. Look, there's two rumors going around right now. One, that Samsung is going to update it at some future point so that you can change the profile. And the other rumor is that it's intended. Like Samsung wanted to make the screen look a bit more natural. Here's the honest truth. This display is not dull. In fact, it's still more saturated than the display on the iPhone 15 Pro. It's still got that contrast. Whoever says it's dull, has obviously never seen the screen on the phone and just likes to type things on the internet. I promise you, this display is absolutely gorgeous. As for performance, this is an area where it's not as interesting as it used to be. I mean, we're talking about a Snapdragon, a Gen 3, and an A17 Pro. Like, these chips are at the top of their game. Normal everyday stuff is gonna feel identical on both devices. However, I do find that the animations on the S24 Plus feel a bit faster than the animations on the 15 Pro. So mentally, it will give you the illusion that the Galaxy device is the faster performer. But again, like these are minor things and it's really not gonna make a difference in your day to day. If you're a gamer, I think it comes down, do you want the bigger screen? Personally, if I'm gaming, I want the biggest screen as possible on a handheld device. It just makes it a lot better to use. I'm old, I wanna be able to see what I'm looking at. But that's where the differences truly lie. But there is a difference when it comes to battery life. Like the iPhone 15 Pro does a good job for its size. It only has a 3274 milliamp hour battery, whereas the S24 Plus is bigger, there's more space. 4900 milliamp hour battery, which is 200 milliamp hours bigger compared to the battery in the S23 Plus. This is what I'll have to say. I'll give you more of a realistic outlook on this battery. I get up at 6.30 in the morning. At the end of the day, I usually finish with about 25 to 30% with the iPhone 15 Pro. That's 11 o'clock at night. The S24 Plus, same time waking up, I would finish the day with about 40 to 45% battery life at the end of the night. Now, what does my daily use case look like? Emails? text messages, browse the net, reading a lot of articles, Spotify at the gym, watching Netflix when I'm doing cardio at the gym, no gaming, like no gaming whatsoever, but you know, like general stuff that most people do. Now, if I was to game on both of these devices, it would be a different story. I'd probably finish the day with a lot less battery life, but overall they both do a very good job. Now, I'm not gonna get too deep into software because it really comes down to what other devices you have around and if you prefer iOS over Android. I will say this, I love the customization of Android. I always have, it feels more like a gadget, which I personally love. I do like some of the features that Apple is offering, like if I'm taking an Uber or if I'm playing music, it goes up to the dynamic island and I always have quick access to it. But I like the way the notifications look on Android over the iPhone. So all of these little details will really come down to what you personally like overall. I will say though that Samsung does offer a lot more features embedded into their phone. Samsung DeX, you have all these little settings that most people never use that you have access to in case one day you do need access to, but they now have more AI baked in their phone. Now all this AI is mostly stuff that Google created. Personally, the one that I'm using the most is circle to search. All the photograph stuff has been around for a while, which you could have done on a Pixel phone, but they've brought it to the Galaxy devices as well. So it really comes down to what you want. Now, before I jump into the rear cameras, we have to talk about the front cameras. They're both 12 megapixels, but I did notice an improvement with the S24 Plus compared to all previous Galaxy devices. It's no longer making my skin look completely yellow and completely flat. There's actually some color there now. Like, don't get me wrong, it's still doing some skin smoothening, but it's making my face look a little more pleasing to look at. The iPhone is a bit more natural, a bit more realistic, but it's also more aggressive. You see more, I don't know, dents in my skin and wrinkles on my forehead. All right, so now you're looking at the front-facing cameras of the Galaxy S24 Plus and the iPhone 15 Pro. You guys let me know which one obviously looks better. Based on what I'm seeing, they both look pretty good. I don't know, on the screen it looks better on the S24 Plus, but I could be wrong after I take it to the computer. But you guys let me know how it looks, and most importantly, how the microphones sound. As for the rear cameras, they both have three lenses. They're very similar, but slightly different megapixel counts. The 
Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus has a 50 megapixel wide lens, whereas the iPhone only has a 48 megapixel wide lens. The ultra wide lens is 12 megapixels on both, but the three times optical lens is 12 megapixels on the iPhone compared to only 10 on the S24 Plus. But look, it's really hard to take a bad daytime photo these days, no matter what phone you buy. It really comes down to the color choices. The Galaxy phone tends to make photos look a little bit more saturated, a little bit more vibrant. It looks better straight out of the camera. The iPhone was a lot more natural. I found that the Galaxy phone tended to crush the blacks to boost up that contrast. The iPhone did a better job in the shadows, showing you more detail at the expense of not being as saturated. The other differences come down to the other lenses. For example, the wide lens on both phones look pretty good. You know, like they both do a great job with the same sort of idea. The only big difference though was the three times optical lens. I found it was much better on the iPhone. It was able to nail the shots more consistently. It gave me more detail, probably due to the higher megapixel count. It was just a more consistent lens to use. And I think that was the moral of the story between these two phones. Most of the time, the S24 Plus took good photos, but I found the iPhone to be more consistent with the shots. I also found the S24 Plus to struggle with autofocus at times, especially when it would get a bit too dark. As for nighttime photos, again, it came down to the color science. The Samsung phone tended to try to make the image look brighter than it should be. The iPhone was more natural, more dramatic. You had yellow lighting. So it really depends on the type of mood that you want. They both did a pretty good job with exposure, but I did find the S24 Plus to do a slightly better job with exposure in some of these shots. But overall, they both take fantastic nighttime photography. The other area that I forgot to mention was digital zoom. You can only digital zoom up to 15 times with the iPhone, where you can do a max of 30 times with the Galaxy S24 Plus. As for video, it's still clearly the iPhone 15 Pro. Not only does it look cleaner and better, it also looks less jittery, and more importantly, it does a slightly better job of optical image stabilization. So if you prefer video over photos, the iPhone 15 Pro is the way to go. Now there are a couple other things to consider, like the iPhone you can spec with one terabyte of storage compared to only 512 on the Galaxy S24 Plus. But the big question now becomes which phone is better than the other. And I don't want to give a tie. I think ties are a bad way of making a video, but it's a tough one. Like these phones are so close and I feel like it comes down to little things that someone might like compared to someone else, you know, like at the end of the day, the S24 plus is probably the better deal just because Samsung is so much more aggressive with their pre-order strategy. They offer you a good trade-in value, they offer you double the storage, and you get such a nice discount to go with it, especially if you just like signed up your email address, you also got an extra 100 bucks off. So on paper, the S24 Plus becomes the better deal. And that's the one I'd probably gravitate towards if money was the most important thing when making a decision like this. But if both phones were $9.99 all the time, which phone would I choose? Huh, that's a good question. Well, for me personally, I'd lean towards the iPhone 15 Pro. And that's only because I'm a YouTuber and video is like the most important thing to me. But if I was a normal user and having the best video and the most consistent experience on the camera is not as important, I'd lean towards the S24 Plus because I'd rather have that better battery life and bigger display. And I hope that answers your question. If you have any more, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.